cover today is actually creating your personal, your professional profile, optimizing your profile for search on Google and on LinkedIn, utilizing groups, which is probably the most important thing you could do on LinkedIn, and then using some of the uh, tools available on LinkedIn to enhance your profile. Uh, so the first thing you always have to define on any social platform, including LinkedIn, is what your purpose is. Uh, are you going to be utilizing it to become a thought leader and authority, uh, building a professional relationship, prospecting? Basically, you have to define what your purpose is going to be on, on this and any other social platform. So we'll start off right here, creating a, pro a professional profile. All right, first thing that always, we always tell people to do is make sure you have some kind of professional profile photo. I see too many people on groups and have profiles on LinkedIn who have that just default image that you see there called a the blankie. Um, nobody likes seeing those. It's hard to trust people if they're not going to show their face or even a logo. I mean, anything besides that. Um, you do want to keep it professional, so uh, any pictures that you might normally put on Facebook or anything else like that is not going to be much better. Having a fun personality and acceptable is acceptable. Um, that's actually the picture I have on my LinkedIn profile right now of me wakeboarding. Uh, but probably the most, uh, the most accepted one is the headshot so that people can get to know who you are. Now, one of the most important pieces of your profile is going to be your summary. This is the first thing that people always see on a LinkedIn profile is this one piece. So what you want to always do is you want to make sure that your profile is going to be concise, it's going to be clear, it's going to be purposeful. It's your personal two-minute elevator speech. Everybody is experienced with you know, telling a little bit about their company. Well, this is your chance to tell about yourself. You are your own company on LinkedIn, and it's important to have that in the summary because, like I said, this is the first thing that people see, they read through, and they get an understanding of who you are, what your experiences are, and things like that. Also, right below the summary, when you fill out a profile, there's what's called specialties. And specialties are the searchable terms on LinkedIn. What you put in there becomes a searchable entity. So, for example, I'm in social media marketing. So my specialties have social media marketing, social media marketing development, things like that. Whatever industry you're in or however you want to be found on LinkedIn, the specialties become important for the search. Uh, and you'll see some blue circles here and some red ones. LinkedIn has all these things listed out of what to do, but there is a specific order you should do these in. If you notice the blue circles, add a website, add a position, describe your current position, add your skills, add a picture, um, those are all the things you should do first. I always say as far as recommendations and adding connections, don't do that until the rest of your profile has been completed. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see 55% profile completeness. The completeness does come after you add connections, um, but again, you want to have a completed profile because if I'm going to request a connection from somebody and they're going to come to my profile and it's half finished, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's the last thing you should, be do, you should do. And if you notice right under where it says add a website, on LinkedIn you can add up to three websites. You want to make it as diverse as possible. Some people like going to your website. Some people would rather visit your blog. Some people would rather visit your Facebook page. Mix it up a little bit. Don't just put two or three websites up there. The idea is the audience that you're going to grab should be able to go to a different, uh, different kinds of platforms that they like to engage with you on. So mix it up a little bit. Uh, and you'll see there's two more additions that we'll cover a little later. You'll see add sections and add applications. These are things that are going to enhance the usefulness of your profile and also give a little personality to it, a little customization. And again, add connections. This is something you want to do once your profile is complete. But one note about connections I always like to make. When you're going to be re asking people to connect with you on LinkedIn, don't just leave it as the default right there. You'll see when you actually ask for a connection on LinkedIn, it says, I'd like to add you to my professional network and has your name right there. It's very impersonal. You want to really hit the personality of yourself and you want to direct 
this connection to the person that you're going to be requesting. So you can see I wrote a little personal note here. It's a great idea to write a little personal note. You get a lot more reaction from it. It helps build the personal relationships on LinkedIn. Every time I see that little default one that people send me for a connection, I kind of think that in the back of my mind that they didn't really take a lot of time to maybe know who I am or discover a little bit more. Um, plus, they may not even know me. So I want them to do the same thing that I would do is write a little personal note. And you get a lot more success out of LinkedIn like this. All right, and once you're done, once you add the connections, you should have 100% profile completeness. Um, this is important, especially for search. If you're not 100% profile complete, uh, it becomes a little more difficult to find you on LinkedIn. LinkedIn and Google like to find that these things are complete. All right, and then recommendations. Once your profile is completely filled out, once you've made a few connections, you want to ask for recommendations. Recommendations are very powerful. It's a word of mouth. It's uh, showing that you know what you're speaking about, that you've worked with people. It's a trust factor. So don't be afraid to ask for recommendations. A lot of people miss, don't use this tool as much as it should. If you feel like you've done a good job for somebody in business, then definitely you want to ask for a recommendation for it. All right, so that basically covers making your profile professional. Obviously, if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to ask in the box down below, and we'll answer them at the end. And what we're going to do now is optimize your profile for search. Now, the Internet is obviously a huge place, and you're just a little pin drop in the entire universe on, on, online. So one of the things you could do is you can actually optimize your profile to be found on LinkedIn and to be found on Google. All right, first thing you always want to do, and I've seen a lot of mistakes in this, this category here, is making sure that your account is actually public. And if you look at the screen right here, if you go to your settings, account, and then edit public profile, what you want to do is click that box right there that says make my public profile visible to everyone. This allows Google, Bing, all the search engines to actually find you. If you have the other one clicked, make my profile visible to no one, Obviously, it's not going to be shown anywhere. And then right below there, you have checkboxes to determine what you want to actually show to people who are not connected to you yet. So you can choose whichever ones you want. I click them all because I want my profile to be as open as possible. This isn't like Facebook or some of the other social platforms where uh, you might have pictures of your kids up, things like that, where you need to protect yourself. So I typically tell people, as much as possible, leave your profile open so as many people as possible can learn more about you. All right, second important thing to do is make sure you choose your what's called vanity URL or your specific URL. This is your full name. So you want to use it because this is what Google is going to search and you want to make after you make it public you want to actually claim it. And it's really easy to do. You just simply click edit there and if you look in the check the box underneath you'll see my profile is linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash William DeRosa. So it's a searchable term. Now if you look at the box at the bottom where it says name search on Google, you'll see that William DeRosa is on LinkedIn. If I didn't have my custom profile, my custom URL there, and I didn't have my uh, profile as public, this would never appear. My profile would never appear on the Google search. So coming up first or near the top of once people click on that link on Google to bring you up, if your profile is 100% complete, your URL is claimed, your profile is public, you should come up near the top of the search right here as a comparison to other people who haven't done that. Now, one of the other tools, uh, and people go back and forth on if this is actually uh, countered or not, is the activity on LinkedIn how active you are in groups, how often you update your profile. And this is debatable. There's some people that say the more active you are on LinkedIn, it seems like you come up higher in the Google rankings versus if you set it up and you're not very active on it. And uh, I don't know of any metrics or anything that's actually been measured other than it's people's experience so far with this. So, uh, of course, you're going to need to be active on LinkedIn. We're going to be covering that a little later. That's really the, the best way to get success on LinkedIn is to be – uh, involved in the conversations that are on there, much like any social platform. 
I know as far as being found on LinkedIn itself when people search. Now earlier I showed you um, specialties was one of the pieces of the puzzle when you fill out in your summary that you want to put keyword terms in there. And I said earlier that I put social media marketing in there quite often. And we're actually going to talk a little bit about keyword stuffing a little while, but as far as search terms, if you go up in the box on LinkedIn and where it says people, if you type in a specific set of keywords, and I put in social media marketing right here, if you go down below, you'll see the 783,961 results up here. And I come in eighth position. Now, the reason I come in eighth position is because I've keyworded my profile to be found on LinkedIn. Now, this becomes important. If you really need to be found on LinkedIn for specific keywords or when someone's do, excuse me, doing a search, you are going to want to make sure those keywords are in your profile, and you will come up pretty high on the rankings right here. And keywords rule. Um, that's basically how LinkedIn uses their search is by keywords to find people on there. And you'll see here, here's a snapshot of my profile. In my title, I have social media marketing, social media marketing, marketing development strategy. You can see my current, my past. I put in social media marketing as many times as I can. Same thing with specialties over there. All right? So whatever terms you want to be found on. And you want to put terms in there that are realistic to who you are. I wouldn't put SEO in there. I wouldn't put all these other things in there that I don't do just so I can be found. Um, so you want to be careful about how you do it. Now, if you look below, you'll see I have keyword stuffing in there. Keyword stuffing, I'm not a huge fan on, but we have to determine, remember what I said earlier, of what your purpose is on LinkedIn. If you want to be found, if you're going to be using LinkedIn and you, and you really want to be found in a search engine, sometimes you have to keyword stuff a little. And we'll go over what that is shortly. All right, so how to find out where you actually rank on LinkedIn for the terms you want. If you see here, again, social media marketing is the search for people. What you do is you can test for yourself. Put whatever term is in your profile that you want to be found in. Hit the search, and then what you'll have to do at the first is dig through some of the pages to actually see where you come up. Look for yourself, mark what page you are on. And you'll see after a while, you know, if you've been active and if you have a complete profile, you should come up in the first few pages at least here. Um, but you want to find out where you are. Then what you do is you go back to your profile and add more keywords for that search term. So again, if you look at the top social media marketing, I find out what page I actually rank on for that term. And then I go back to my profile and add a few more keywords. Now, you don't have to add a lot of keywords. Add three or four more for that term, and then go back and search again. LinkedIn is pretty quick with updating. It's almost instant. So you can almost see right away how you're going to climb in the search. All right, and we're going to talk a little bit about keyword stuffing. All right? If being found is important in heavy keyword terms, you may need to stuff a bit. Now, one of the pros of it is you do get found on the first page. And the reason I keyword stuffed, and I'm experimenting with, with it right now more so than anything, is but it, you get up on the first page. Now, we've actually gotten some good leads and some sales out of using this because people are searching for social media marketing. They're looking for people to connect with social media marketing. It's one of the hot terms right now. So the unfortunate part is a lot of people are adding social media marketing to their profiles, even if they're not in this industry, because they know it's a keyword term that people are actually searching for. So you, know, you get up on the first page. The con of it is overstuffing looks unprofessional. Now, if you look at my profile, it's pretty clean and everything until you start getting down where well, you'll see there's a lot of keyword stuffing. Now, again, I'm doing this more or less for an experiment because I wanted to actually see how the keyword stuffing, how people respond to it. I've gotten some feedback on it. But again, it does look a little unprofessional. So you have to kind of decide which is more important, and it's an ongoing debate. Um, some people are really against doing any kind of keyword stuffing. Some people accept it, um, especially in industries where it's, there's a lot of competition you need to be found. The one thing with keyword stuffing, like I said earlier, is I don't see it as a big deal as long as it's the specific industry you're in. In other words, if I'm a pool guy uh, or I'm a builder, I shouldn't be stuffing my profile with social media marketing just so I can come up into the top of the search engine on LinkedIn. So it's a decision you kind of have to make with this. 
All right. Now, and of course, any questions about that, please obviously ask us, and we'll answer uh, as many questions as we can in the Q&A session after. Um, but we're now we're going to move on to using groups. And to me, the groups is where everything happens on LinkedIn. Everything we've discussed so far, the optimization, search, everything else, uh, that helps enhance your profile, gets you found. But realistically, using groups is the most important aspect of LinkedIn. People forget that LinkedIn is basically a social platform, and social platforms are built around engagement, building relationships, building advocacy. So you can see the things that happen when you're, when you're involved in groups. You can build trust. Uh, you are prospecting. You expand your reach beyond just the people you've made connections with. Uh, I've made so many connections through just being involved in groups, just with um, people I respect in my industry, uh, even competitors, and you know people who are looking for us to do things for them uh, that turn into clients. You get up to the up to the minute information about your industry, news links. Uh, people are constantly posting up new news articles on there, so it's a form of continuing education. And the other thing is, people get to know you uh, by being in the groups. And people do business with people they know. So if you can get people to get to know you on these platforms and in these groups, it works to your benefit. All right, so groups to join. People always ask, well, what groups should I join? Um, most important to me usually is join any local groups. Uh, for example, we're in Connecticut, and there's four or five different Connecticut groups we've joined. And it's great because it's local business. It's people you have a chance to actually meet face-to-face -face at events, uh, meetings, things like that. So it's a great place to start is search for your state or search for your region. Uh, groups to join within your industry. Uh, there's obviously, for me, there's a lot of social media marketing groups. Uh, I learn a lot through there. There's things that I would never have come across in news articles, things like that, that I've learned just by being involved within my own industry. Competing industries, uh, industries that are related to it or related to your business that may be competitive with what you're doing. That way you can keep up to breath about what they're doing. Industries you wish to prospect. Now, this is the one where uh, you're going to go in there and look. If, for example, um, we wanted to open up more of a nonprofit type division in our company. So what we did was we joined some nonprofit groups so that we can learn about the industry, learn about the business, how they function, how they utilize social media, things like that. The important thing to do when you go outside of groups that are related to your business is do not spam them and you always want to create useful dialogue. And we're going to get into that. And then as far as groups, you can always start your own. A lot of people start their own groups for specific reasons, and they have great success by inviting people into these groups. All right, LinkedIn is the professional social platform, but it's still a social platform. If you're going to set up your LinkedIn profile and stand up against the wall, it's not going to work for you. You're basically going to waste your time. It's not a website, and it's not a form of advertising where you set it up and they'll come to you. The success, the true success, and this is why I love groups so much, is you have to get involved, you have to engage, you have to network. And even for when you're going to be doing ads on LinkedIn, Invariably what happens when you put ads up there is people do research the people behind the ads. They start looking for the principles of the company. Uh, they look for the people who work for the company. And this is why all of this is really important as far as setting up your profile correctly and being engaged on the, pro on the uh, different platforms, the different groups, it is because of it's a social platform. So you need to be engaged in it for it to be successful for you. Right, now, as far as prospecting in groups, now you'll see up here, I actually did a slide share for nonprofits a while ago. We were doing a seminar on it. I had the slide share. I put it up there on slide share so it's accessible. Well, I noticed in the nonprofit, one of the groups, people were asking about social media a lot. So what I basically did was I put up the slide share. I told them about what it is, how it's going to help them, and I posted it up. And you could see the different responses. Thank you for putting up there, great information, things like that. The important thing was you don't spam, though. Now, if I had any kind of other slide share that was not related to nonprofits, I obviously wouldn't put it up there. Um, I added valuable, useful information and a link to where they can find that. So I'm giving them information that's useful for them that they can use. So you know things like this where you're going to put it up there, I'm not selling my company. <clears throat> I'm not using it as a selling platform, but I'm simply giving people valuable, useful information. 
Uh, one of the other things about being in groups is, and you can see I post the mine up here, but I get involved in a lot of conversations, obviously, other than my own. I don't just start conversations. I'll read through the conversations happening in these groups. And if I feel like I can contribute something valuable and useful, and it could simply just be a response. If someone says, um, I'm having trouble on Facebook doing this, um, simply I'll just jump in and give them the answer. I, I'm not going to follow that up with, and by the way, uh, give me a call if you need any other help. I'm not giving them anything else other than the useful information that they can use right away. Inherently what happens anyway is in the side, you are going to be selling yourself anyway because once you get involved in these groups and people see that you know what you're speaking about, they will search you out. Continue the conversation. That's very important. If you're going to post something up, uh, or if you're going to, uh, you know, reply to something and then they're going to reply back to you, it's really important to get back into that conversation and reply back to people. People aren't going to be posting up there if you're not going to be speaking back to them. All right, so we're going to move out of groups. Obviously, again, any questions about groups, like I said, this is probably the most important aspect of LinkedIn. Uh, and you definitely need to be in groups. But we're going to move on to using applications and sections to enhance your profile. Now, you'll see earlier, remember I had the uh, sections and stuff right here, add sections, add applications. These are different tools that you add to your profile to enhance it, to customize it a little more for your industry, things like that. All right, sections. So when you add sections, sections help diversify your profile and customize it for more specific uses. Now, there's things on here for projects, if you're an organization, um, if you have a lot of honors and awards. These different sections should be added according to what works for your profile. And I highly suggest that you use them. It does enhance your profile. When people come to see who you are and vet you out, it does help them get a little bit more understanding of who you are and what you do. The other piece of the puzzle you can add to your profile is called applications. What applications do is they simply add more functionality to your profile. And you'll see right here SlideShare. Uh, like I said, I use SlideShare a lot, so this is a great application I added to my profile where my SlideShare channel basically is embedded within my profile. So it's a great tool. And there's a lot of other ones you can see specific to um, you know, legal right here if you're a real estate person. Um, so dig through the applications, find something that works for you, and definitely add it to your profile. My favorite app happens to be the Tweets. Now, if you use Twitter at all, this is a great application. And if you look at the screenshots I have right here, right underneath my name on my LinkedIn profile, that is basically my Twitter box. Now, I'm pretty active on Twitter. I probably make you know a couple per day, sometimes three per day. So what this does is it's basically updating my profile on a continuous basis. Whatever I tweet out automatically gets populated here. So when people visit my profile from time to time, they'll see that this is a different little piece right here. It keeps it a little interesting. You'll also see on the bottom right-hand side of my screenshot for my profile, William's activity. This Twitter feed continually feeds the side here. And if you go to my LinkedIn profile, you can see all the things I've done on LinkedIn and, and Twitter basically fed in here. The other great thing it does is there is a home feed on LinkedIn where all the conversations happen between you and your connections. When you use this tool in the home feed right here, so any of my connections go into the home feed, my latest tweet basically populates into here. So it's a great way to continually engage um, with people on, with your profile on LinkedIn. Now, this does not take place of being active in groups. This is a supplemental piece that you add to keep conversation going and to keep your profile updated and show that you are actually active on there. But like I said, the groups is where the real magic happens. This is just a good supplement for it. I, and beyond the basics that we've gone over here, you want to make sure that anybody within your business or organization, especially if you're going to be running any kind of ads or advertisements or anything else like that, make sure everybody within the company optimizes their profile. Make sure everybody is at 100% completeness. Make sure their summary is up to par, especially the key members of the organizations. Um, you want to make sure everybody has profile pictures, everything. So it's up to the, the companies to make sure that everybody within the company is, is up to date on that. You want to try and create a company page. 
the company pages are a little bit weak as far as when you compare them to like Google Plus pages or Facebook pages. Um, you know, the one good thing that LinkedIn did recently was you are able to speak as your organization, though I don't see a lot of people utilizing maybe as much as uh, all of us probably should, but uh, the, the company page is a great place to put your house on there, especially, again, if you're going to be doing ads. People do search things out. People are very used to searching and looking around on the online to find out more information. So having a company page is definitely a great value to you. Um, and make sure one of, the, you know, one of the things that people forget to do all the time is add the link to your profile on your email. If you're going to be using LinkedIn as, as a professional, it should be in your email section. Uh, when you send emails out to people, have a link to your LinkedIn profile so they can vet you out a little bit, especially if you're prospecting out there. And that's about it uh, as far as this. So what I'd like to do is go into some of the Q&A, if that's okay with Eugene. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, no problem. And obviously, if you have any kind of questions, um, you know, we can always follow up on this. Our, our Facebook page we actually utilize as our website more than anything else. So if you have any follow-up questions or you want to uh, engage in any kind of dialogue, you can go to facebook.com forward slash talking finger. And besides what Gene, everybody is going to be doing with this presentation being available, we'll also have the slides on our SlideShare uh, account right here. Um, but as far as questions, let's uh, move on to here. Okay, one of the questions was, is there a place to view all groups? And you can. You can search groups. You can't look at every group in the world, but you can search for groups. If you go to the group section on the left-hand side, there is uh, a place where you can do the search. So you can look for the different groups you want to join. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to get into some of these questions here. How can LinkedIn help us generate new leads and business? And we get this question a lot. How do I actually use LinkedIn <clears throat> to generate leads and business? Um, and I'd answer by saying you have to be involved in it the right way. And again, I'm going to always focus on groups for this. LinkedIn is not a website. It's not a standalone product. And all social media platforms demand interaction for success. And I always make this example. If you were joining a, a chamber of commerce or you're a member of a chamber of commerce and you start going to the events, if you're going to stand up against the wall and drink your bottle of water, you're probably not going to get much out of it. But if you walked around and you spoke to people and you started building relationships and you didn't sell them, because you know, one of the other things I always hate at Chamber of Commerce is that guy that comes up to you with the business card and doesn't really even ask your name. He kind of just starts coming to you and say, hey, I'm, I'm Joe Schmo and I'm, I sell insurance. If you ever need anything, thanks. Hands you a card and walks away. <clears throat> you can't utilize these social platforms and LinkedIn. It's, it's about being involved in groups and having conversations. Um, so that's really how you generate leads in business is people start trusting you. They start seeing the transparency. They start seeing that you, you are an actual authority on the subject. And the leads in the business just eventually come from that. Uh, okay, let me see this here. How can we use this to recruit good people? How can I help my clients do this? I'm also curious about how personal networking ends up being a source of product positioning. All right, so that's two different questions, so I'm going to answer it this way. Um, the Connecticut Post in an interview with us not too long ago about utilizing LinkedIn um, for prospecting for good people to hire, things like that. If you go to our slideshare.net forward slash talking finger, um, you can find the article there, and it goes pretty in-depth. So rather than answer that um, ancillary right now, you just go to our slideshare, and you can actually see the whole interview. And we give all tips and tricks both for the recruiters and for the people seeking jobs. Um, you know, one of the things you could do is always make sure you look through people's profiles if you're vetting them out, things like that. As far as product positioning, you can use groups for that. Um, you can use do a little research on there to determine how to position your product. Uh, it's a lot of research and development that way. And of course, like I said, being involved in groups, a lot of stuff that just naturally comes. Let me see here. All right. My primary use of social media is to build my business. I help local business owners get found online. I would like to know the best way to cultivate and nurture leads for my products and services utilizing LinkedIn. Um, again, this is by building trust and relationships and advocacy, by being involved. 
Leads and sales come through that process, and groups, again, uh, are the best way to do this. Find groups to be involved in the, in the industry you want to get leads from. Go in and answer questions that relate to your business. For example, I'll go back to that <clears throat> excuse me, nonprofit example. Um, you know, nonprofits were coming to us in droves uh, just personally as far as asking us to help them. So what I did was I joined a lot of nonprofit groups, and I'm involved in them. And the leads just start coming in just by helping people out, by giving them a little bit of information, by showing them that you know you're speaking about in these groups about social media. For us, for example, um, people just naturally started coming to us. Uh, let me see here. Okay, need to understand freebie and paid options available. All right, so LinkedIn, uh, it's basically a free profile. And, you know, the, the emphasis on this presentation was how to use, utilize LinkedIn for free. Uh, but as far as paid tools, you know, less than 3% of the people on LinkedIn actually pay for the upgraded services. If you're a recruiter, it works really good. Um, but the paid options basically give you what's called a profile organizer. So it turns, in, it turns into a little mini CRM device, which is actually pretty cool. So you can actually utilize it uh, within the LinkedIn pro platform as a CRM. You also get some more robust reporting and metrics. Um, so you can actually see a little bit more how people found you, where they came from, things like that. It's a little more robust for analytics for it. Um, but you know, again, the success on LinkedIn is going to be based more on the groups and such than worrying about the paid items. Um, you know, I always hear from people that they get more out of LinkedIn just by being involved in it than they ever got out of actually paying for anything on LinkedIn. So, all right. Um, so, how do you actually advertise on LinkedIn? And I know uh, we we're going to have another webinar at some point regarding the actual specifics of advertising on LinkedIn, the actual ads. Um, but LinkedIn ads, uh, I'll be honest. I personally didn't get a lot of success out of the LinkedIn ads, um, but I, I've come across other companies who did great with them. Um, you know, compared to what I've done on Facebook and stumble upon and Google AdWords, the ROI on the ads just weren't as strong. Um, but B2B business will do well on LinkedIn, where B2C is a little weaker. So if you're trying to sell widgets and parts like that, um, LinkedIn doesn't seem to be as strong as some of the other platforms. It does really well for B2B. B2B does uh, actually very good. And you know, with all online, tar online advertising and, and LinkedIn as well, it really depends on how well you can target your ads. If you can pinpoint people well, you will do well on these type of ads. It's really, like I said, any other online ad. Now, the great thing about online advertising and on LinkedIn and things like that is it's, it's rather inexpensive compared to a lot of other advertising and marketing. There is no reason why you shouldn't experiment with the ads. Uh, I believe LinkedIn is still $10 a day minimum. So even if you ran an ad for a month, it's not a lot of money. When you consider about we used to do yellow page ads for $1,500 a month here and you know uh, radio ads here for X amount of dollars, and you really couldn't target those per se. It kind of was a, a, a broadcast. With this, at least, you can target down to specific people. And I think for the amount of money you spend on them, it's always worth to at least experiment with. Um, let me see here. All right, I would like to know how an individual can get more out of LinkedIn for daily business, but future networking. Again, I'm, I'm always going to harp on those groups. Uh, you know, once you've set your profile up correctly and it's professional and everything else like that, really the value on LinkedIn is getting involved in the conversations and in the engagement. It simply just does not work if you don't get involved. It's not a website. Um, you can't pop it up there and then hope people are going to find you and, and do business with you. It's really about getting involved in conversations and building trust and advocacy and showing that you're an authority, or at least you're knowledgeable, even if you don't feel like you're the head authority and know every single thing about it. At least showing people that you're knowledgeable uh, is, is, is more than adequate to get some leads out of it. Uh, advertising opportunities, are they really worthwhile on LinkedIn? Uh, again, what I said earlier is it depends if you can target or not, but um, always open for experimentation. Like I said, very cheap to do it. Might as well. Okay, um, let's see here. What can LinkedIn offer that provides greater exposure or more quality exposure than the other social media sites? And this is actually a great question. Why do I want to be on LinkedIn 
versus Facebook versus Google Plus. Um, LinkedIn to me is is kind of its own entity as compared to some of the other social media platforms. Uh, and I think it breaks down to demographics. I don't really per se believe one platform is better than another, except for some specifics. And I'll give you an example. LinkedIn has a demographic that seems to be more C-level and decision makers. Um, you're, you, a lot of times you're dealing with more principles of a company or people who can actually make a buying decision. So this demographic tends to be a lot higher here than it does, say, on Facebook or Twitter or, or some of the other platforms. So if you're trying to reach decision makers and people who have some kind of authority, uh, LinkedIn would be better than some of the other ones. Um, it's also a great place to learn about your industry, get some white papers, or get some continuing education because there's a lot of uh, uh, leaders on here who give a lot of information out. So you, your continuing education within these plat this platform is a lot better than some of the other ones. Um, hope that answers that question for you. I, I'm most interested to know why and how someone would advertise on LinkedIn. Well, the why is easy, uh, which you know I said earlier, the, it's inexpensive. If you can target, it's great. Um, as far as how to, simply it's LinkedIn.com forward slash ads, A-D-S, LinkedIn.com forward slash ads. LinkedIn actually has one of the better walkthroughs for advertising, I think, compared to some of the other ones. Uh, Facebook ads are are great, but it's a little complex to actually learn how to use them. Facebook actually gives you some good tools to teach you how to and why to. So that's the simplicity on that one. Um, great question. What's the most important thing not to do? If we only remember one thing from today, what should it be? What's the biggest waste of time in working with LinkedIn? Um, probably the number one thing not to do is don't sell. Um, this isn't a multi-level marketing type platform. Uh, I think this is probably one of the mo most important aspects is you don't actually go into threads and groups and start selling yourself. It's more about building relationships and engaging. Um, I mean, even I have made the mistake once in a while. I find that it, I posted something at 1 o'clock in the morning that was kind of more of a, hey, look at me, more so than um, giving information. So try and avoid that as much as possible. Don't direct sell. Um, what you really want to do is, like I said, just be an authority, um, be knowledgeable. The selling comes out of doing this, and trust me on this, because we work with a lot of people on LinkedIn uh, that we train on how to speak in the groups, and in just even ourselves, we get a, a ton of leads and a ton of sales just by being involved, by sharing our knowledge, uh, by showing that we're an authority on, on specific subjects. So um, that you should definitely take away from here is not to sell yourself. Um, Biggest waste of time? I think the biggest waste of time on LinkedIn is setting up a profile, optimizing it, getting it all professional, and then just walking away from it and not getting involved. Uh, that to me is a huge waste of time. Unless you're using it specifically just to have an online resume and that's your only purpose on LinkedIn, then you could probably walk away from it because you're just using it in that respect. If you plan on trying to get any kind of prospects, leads, anything out of LinkedIn at all, uh, it is a huge waste of time to set up the profile and walk away. You're simply not going to get anything out of it. So I really think that's the biggest waste of time. And I do see that a lot. People set up a profile, they walk away, and then they say, uh, I'm not getting anything out of LinkedIn. And there's a reason for that. Um, specific to B2B, is there an effective way to use LinkedIn? And he gives an example. He's uh, in construction home builders. And again, uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but groups, join groups specific for this. The funny thing is while a large portion of the people within your group, for example, if he finds um, builders or uh, construction, home builders, things like that, and joins those groups, you know, the vast majority is probably going to be people who are also in the industry. The funny thing is homeowners do come into these. Developers come into these. Um, people that you want to partner with come into these. So building the relationship through the groups, that's a great way to utilize it for B2B and B2C both. Uh, you're kind of encompassing both on there. Um, okay, I think that's it really for questions. Let me see here. Okay. We got one more here. Are other other members of the organization supposed to be on your LinkedIn page, or do they set up their own page and profile? Uh, okay, um, the organization or the company page is kind of the pick point for all the employees. For example, we have a company page called Talking Finger. 
Now, me and Eric are the principals of that company, and we have a girl, Lauren, uh, a girl, Dana, and a graphic designer, Chris, that work for us. Um, Lauren is on there. Dana is finishing her profile, and you saw earlier I actually used Chris as an example. He's starting his now. Um, but yes, everybody should be a member of the organization or the company page. They should all be connected together. Uh, everybody who's involved in the company should be on there. And that's why earlier I said it's a good idea for any company. You have a vested interest in the people who are on LinkedIn who are your employees or the principals of the company. It's really important that a company set some kind of social media policy that everybody who's going to be on LinkedIn is going to have a specific completed profile and it's going to be optimized and everything else so that uh, there's some consistency. And yes, if you have a company page, everybody within the organization should be linked to that company page. Okay, uh, recommendations. How do you legitimize recommendations? For example, is it essential to have your recommendations come from someone in your particular industry? Uh, and that's a great question. Um, recommendations. Now, I've asked for recommendations. Uh, every once in a while, I go out and I do it again. You, what you want to do with recommendations is you're, you're really just setting yourself up so that people understand that you're the real deal. Now, as far as coming from someone within your particular industry, absolutely. Um, you want as many of those as possible because if they're peers or clients or anything else like that that's within your industry, uh, those are pretty powerful because they're speaking to what you are positioning yourself to be as an authority. So within your own industry, absolutely. But one of the things that's great about LinkedIn is that anybody can write you a recommendation. It might even just be you know, someone that you work with, um, someone that you're even friends with who you've been friends for a long time who really knows you. So um, you know, one of the great things about social platforms is transparency. People are vetted out eventually. So if you know, people come to a profile and they notice that all your recommendations seem to be from you know, people who are more or less friends of yours, more so than um, professionals in industries and such. Yeah, it doesn't look as professional as having people within your industry, but you know, to me, any recommendation is good that you can get if they can speak to who you are and what you do. Uh, if they're just going to put up there that, hey, this is a great guy, you know, uh, I've been out drinking with him, and he's you know fantastic to talk to. Uh, you know, obviously, you don't want those on there. But if someone can speak to your personality and speak to um, your well spoke and things like that, then absolutely. Um, okay, that's it for questions. Uh, any other questions at all? Um, you know, what you can do is, again, our Facebook.com forward slash Talking Finger. Feel free to post up anything on our wall. Uh, we love engaging on our Facebook page. It's what we use more than anything else as far as one-to-one uh, -one engagement. So feel free to post up there. And, Gene, I think that's all I got for right now. Well, thank you very much, Bill. And I want to thank everyone um, who came today.